and welcome to the Jamil Rawl Show. And today what I'm going to be going over is something called pyrokinesis. Basically is the psychoenergetic ability of an individual to start objects or some sort of material particle on fire. Um, and this is done, you know, through the energetic flow of what's known as chi energy, or the Japanese call it ki energy. And a lot of people have heard of this. They've heard of it through spontaneous human combustion, or perhaps they heard of it through films like the movie Firestarter with Drew Barrymore. And a lot of people, for one reason or another, seem to think that this is hocus pocus and there's nothing to it. Well, millions and millions and millions of dollars have been spent by governments around the world studying this phenomena. And nobody would spend that much money on a subject unless there was something to it. Uh, recently, a friend of mine said, hey, I heard you talk about extrasensory perception, uh, retrocognition, and you know all the different uh, sub-projects that came along with, with the experimentation by Stanford University and Stanford Research on paranormal activity. And they sent me a videotape of some Qigong masters who were using pyrokinesis. And this is well documented going back to the 70s and 80s. And it made me remember a, magnific a magnificent researcher named Larissa Vilanskaya, who very few people are, are not familiar with her, but she is well documented uh, by the world government for her um, psychic abilities and different, you know, uh, energetic phenomena that she, that she displayed in her work over the years. Um, it appears she has passed, you know, she, she's deceased now, but uh, there are numerous documents online you can read and educate yourself on the subject. Now, the Qigong masters are, are very, uh, I'd say, mystical, very mystical in their approach. They don't tell Westerners about their, about their uh, traditions and how they use this ability. But in the West, it's become, again, it's become well documented. So... There was a doc, I, I was listening to Larissa Bell and Sky talk about firewalking and the secrets of firewalking. And, uh, and I was reading a, a document that was released um, by the FOIA, Freedom of Information Act. And lo and behold, you know, the Russians and the United States military were like taking Larissa Bell and Sky very seriously. Um, so this document was confidential. But it was proved. It was proved for release in two thousand four. Uh, this is on all kinds of PDFs throughout the internet. This is like a C CIA PDF right here, and it talks about Soviet and Czechoslovakian parapsychology research prepared by the United States Army Medical Intelligence Information Agency Office of the Surgeon General Medical Intelligence. And I'm going to read a brief. Summary. When you look at the, the docket and the sections, it goes from extrasensory perception to telepathy, energy transfer, classical theor theories and experiments, current Soviet psych uh, check theories and research object object objectives, telepathic behavior modification, psychotronic generator research, out of body phenomena, remote viewing. Trends and forecast. This gets into the USSR affiliation. This was from 1975, so this is at, during the Cold War. But this is a brief summary right here. It says during the past 25 years, Soviet and Czechoslovakian parapsychologists have reported that paranormal phenomena such as extrasensory perception (ESP) telepathy, psychokinesis have been demonstrated under rigorously controlled laboratory conditions. Skeptics in both skeptics in both nations have attacked the study of such phenomena on both scientific and political ideological grounds. Criticism based on political ideology has stemmed from the fact that much past research has been non-materialistic in the sense that results have not been reported in terms of contemporary, contemporary, 
conventional science. Thus, the critics feel that parapsychology has fostered continued belief in mysticism, occultism, and religion. In order to rebut the skeptics' contention, contentions that psychic phenomena do not fit accepted scientific and political thought, Soviet and Czech scientists now argue that there are many well-established facts which remain as anom anomalous to the scientific paradigms as extrasensory perception. ESP refers to information which is not received via the usual senses and as a general term includes telepathy, the Soviet biocommunication, and psychokinesis or PK, the Soviet bioenergetics. Communist parapsychologists argue that after decades of research, conventional science still has no satisfactory neuropsychological explanation of memory, nor is there any appropriate model for explaining how raw data in impinging on man's senses are transformed into a conscious experience they also point to the demo de oh, sorry they also point to the dematerialized character of contemporary contemporary psychic physics contemporary physics a science filled with such bizarre components as advanced potential waves of electrons perceived before they are generated tunneling effects electrons penetrating barriers by which the laws of probability should be impenetrable, and tachyons, particles traveling faster than light, and thus implying the possibility of backward flow of time. In short, they conclude that hard science no longer offers a secure rationale for the denial of the possibility of any non-casual event. And the tachyon particle is very interesting. That gets back in the 1960s, the tachyon particle is known as the metaparticle. And basically, this gets into t recently a lot of the research I've done concerning channeling, where you can have an individual who goes into a uh, church and prays, and they say, you know, I got an answer from, from the, my God within two weeks. Or I got an answer right away. Channelers go into a psychic deep meditation, much like the Qing Gong masters who, who, who use the pyrokinesis, go into a meditation, and they explain that's how they get the pyrokinetic abilities. But people who channel, they go into some sort of deep meditation and they get psychic information. And the way they explain it, it, would, it really feels as if this is true, that the psychic telepathic signal is faster than the speed of light. I'll put up a link for this. This is unclassified information. Um, from the government. This is going back to 1975, and this is a fascinating document because it deals with uh, parapsychological studies from you know both uh, the Soviet world and the United States of America. And this gets into levitation, stigmata. Uh, it's so funny. It's like people people go watch Hollywood movies about this sort of thing. And then they sit back and pretend like there's nothing to it. Like if, if you were to say to somebody, oh my God, there's paperwork and scientific ability on pyrokinesis or whatever like that. Most people would not take it literal. And they just, people are just so unread. They, they have no idea in the world how many millions of dollars have been put into these sorts of projects. And these are forensic psychological experts who analyze this stuff. These aren't just weird hippies, you know, that grew up in the 60s taking acid. These are experts in, in psychological behavior and paranormal phenomena. Like, these guys got PhDs going, going back decades. And this is Pyrokinesis on the Jamil Raw Show. I first met him in the early 80s in a Chinatown of urban Java. He didn't want his real name or address revealed, so we called him DJ for Dynamo Jack. 
He was only a healer, he said, but he did direct a powerful energy generated from his own body into his patients. For years we followed him around Java on his healing rounds, pleading to be allowed to film him, but he always refused, saying his powers resulted from a type of meditation with an ancient tradition of secrecy. It was only when my brother Lorne was suffering from a serious eye infection that he finally allowed us to film him in 1987. Lorne was suffering from a bad eye infection at the time, a cameraman's cause for panic. Lawrence had heard of a man who might be able to help and dragged me to him despite my reservations. Is it in? Yes. Good Lord. You just relax and enjoy, Lawrence. He uses acupuncture needles in the traditional points, but with a twist. Through them, he directs a form of electricity, as he calls it. But he doesn't draw the electricity from a wall socket. He claims to generate it within his own body. It was nothing like any acupuncture I'd ever had. I was getting really powerful electric shocks and couldn't control my movements at all. Okay. He says that what he does is no more supernatural than an electric eel which also knows how to harness its yin and yang energies. Yin yang, positive and negative, you know. Mm -hmm. and my positive from here and my negative from here. Mm -hmm. And we meet together, this can get uh, like electricity. And is this because you're special, you have a special sort of... Uh, oh, it's meditation every day. It's meditation, does it? Meditation every day. Like a yoga. Uh -huh. But I study about 18 years. 18 years. 18 years. From, from my childhood, from my childhood before. Can you project this energy through your hands only or through other things as well? Not only my hands. Only my hands. Like you can touch me? I like this? Me. It's nothing, okay? Mm -hmm. It's my burn. Uh, just like this. <laughs> Our sound okay. recordist, Simi, was okay. skeptical yeah. at first. <laughs> 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 Later, he told us that anybody could learn this. God had given us all the yin-yang polarity, but it takes discipline and meditation to awaken and control it. And you must be very aware of your emotions. This energy can be dangerous. It can kill as well as heal. Then he asked for our newspaper. Whatever he had done to our newspaper, it's how he'd healed my eyes that made me wonder. What do these people living in the shadows of the volcanoes still know that we of the West have forgotten? When he heard we'd shown this footage in public, he was very upset and refused all our future efforts to contact him again. As the years passed, we sadly resigned ourselves to never seeing him again. My brother Lorne never did, for by 1997 he was already dead when I again found myself with DJ, now treating me for an eye problem. But it wasn't this that brought me back. He had tracked me down, out of the blue, and invited me to tell me a story. 
He had just returned from two years on a deep meditational journey, alone in the heart of Borneo. Amongst his revelations he had seen, he said, how history was moving on into great change and the old wisdom was vanishing. So he called me back to film just enough of him to remind us that we all have undreamed of powers sleeping within us and that there's nothing special about him except for his training in waking him. He seems able to control the amplitude of this chi like a dimmer switch and it causes uncontrollable responses in the patients and their grounders. I can barely keep my hand on you. Just fly off the electricity so strong. Sometimes signs of this passing energy can be seen in the transmitter too. This chi stuff is only the surface, he says, of the real adventure beneath in the meditational technique. Projecting chi from the palm of the hand can also be used to resist rifle pellets, he says. First, you learn to distinguish between yin and yang chi in your body. Then, how to pull it in your navel chakra. Then, how to project it, he says. And it's the proportionate mixture between yin and yang which accounts for different effects, like pulling or pushing objects or igniting them. So I invited a small group of scientists back from the United States with measuring equipment to test if DJ was for real. And if so, where might this energy belong on the electromagnetic spectrum? Catherine Cook, CEO of the Mind Science Foundation in Texas. Dr. Roger Nilsson. A Swedish medic, an international racing sailor. Dr. Greg Simpson, a physicist from New York's Albert Einstein University. And Andreas Polak, one of DJ's Australian students. The visitors are confident they'll uncover him as a fraud in no time. Greg is the first guinea pig, and he's uncomfortable about showing that he can feel anything at all. Dr. Roger doesn't know what to expect. <laughs> Out comes the metal detector, like the things they use in airports to see if he has any concealed metal in his body. Then the voltmeter to try and measure the chi, but how to get it to work. Where's the ground? What settings? DJ suggests that as his negative is his perineum and his positive is his navel chakra, perhaps that's where the electrode should be attached. He doesn't stand on his dignity. He's eager to help, but still no readings. They're getting shocks off his arm, and now they're on the right settings, but the needle still isn't moving. DJ says it isn't electricity, it's chi. It's one, two, oh, I feel it in my whole body. I feel it, it three, oh, point three, I feel it in my legs, shit. <laughs> <laughs> But suspecting there's some tricky setup on his premises they can't find, they insist we all go to a randomly chosen hotel room several miles away to see if he can light a light bulb with his fingers. It doesn't ground on the wall. So Greg holds and grounds one wire, while DJ pumps Chi through the other. The bulbs are LEDs, light-emitting diodes, which ignite in different colors according to the intensity of current. Yes. On, off, on. Brilliant. Are you you're blinking? Things were going well. DJ was enjoying it too, until... <laughs> he invited us all out to lunch at his local, where he tried to push a chopstick through the table. He couldn't get it through the formica surface, so he came up through an inch of wood from underneath. Not only did he draw his own blood, but a chopstick splinter had caught Allison here between the eyes, drawing more. The incident was laughed off apologetically, but next morning he was a different man, drawn and upset. 
He said he'd been visited all night by his long-dead master, raging that he'd broken the strict taboos of his sect, never to show off in public and never to cause harm or draw blood. He felt deeply chastised. All further testing and filming must end. Never again would he submit to public scrutiny, nor accept any new students. He would sink from sight and continue his healing in obscurity, as he had done since before we met him in the early 80s and had always told us was right.